now let's move on to maps and mappings and functions we use these three terms interchangeably yeah we sometimes call a function a map or map mappings and so on so what we want to do is to study something and when we want to study something mathematically speaking of course we define a set of our objects okay suppose we have a set like set of integers or real numbers if we want to study something we have to define it as a set okay so that defines our universe of interest but uh, when we want to know the properties of a set it is often useful to compare with another set okay by comparing two sets we understand deeper about our uh, objects just so how do we compare these uh, two sets that one way is to define a function between these two sets okay that's how we what we mean by compare two sets okay so let's say a and b are sets sets then we define some rule to make correspondence between elements of A and B. Okay, so pick one element from A and for this for each element we define a corresponding element in B. So if we define this this rule for every element in A then that defines a function from a to b let's call this function f okay so f is a function from set a to set b uh, for each element of a there corresponds an element of b so this rule is called a function okay okay let's see an example we can define a function from the set of integers to the set of natural numbers by defining the rule like this f of x is equal to 1 plus x squared where x is an element of the set of integers okay so for all element of uh, z integers we define this and we can see that f of x if x is an integer then it is a natural number right because x squared is a positive number since x is an integer, x squared is a positive integer. Uh, adding that uh, to 1 gives another natural number. So positive integer is a natural number, right? So f of x is an element of uh, the set of natural numbers. For this, we write uh, as a rule. So f x maps to... 1 plus x squared and this belongs to uh, integer and this belongs to the natural numbers most specifically let's say if we choose negative 1 which is an integer then this maps to 1 plus negative 1 squared that is 2 which is a natural number if we choose for example 3 which is an integer this maps to 1 plus 3 squared which is 10 and it's of course a natural number and so on let us define some terminologies Def uh, definition of domain and codomain 
Okay, suppose we have a function from A to B. Then, in this case, uh, A is called the domain of F, the function F. And B is the codomain of function F. So sometimes we write DOM F is A and COD codomain of F is B. Okay? And uh, by the way, a function we sometimes write like this. A to B and F is here. Okay. Either way is okay, this is okay and this is okay. And let us define another specific function. Uh, one specific function which is uh, identity function. So for any set, the mapping or the function ID A from A to A, you know, A is a set, so the codomain can be also the same set. So there is a special function called identity, identity map, uh, say identity map, that is defined by this. For each element of A, we define IDA of X as X itself. Okay, so it doesn't move anything. So it, it looks like this. We have A and every element is mapped into itself. So that is, you know, this looks very trivial, but sometimes it comes very handy. So this can be uh, this identity map can be defined for any set. So in the case where a is a natural number, is the set of natural numbers, we define id natural number x as x. So every natural number is mapped into itself. So for example, id n one is one. ID n two is two, and so on. It's quite trivial. Uh, there are various ways to define a function. For example, uh, we can also define a function with cases, which means, for example, let us define a function from real numbers to the set of two two integers, 0 and 1. Okay, this is a set consisting of just two integers, 0 and 1. Okay, so let us define this function as this. Uh, f of x, x is a real number, is 1 if x is a rational number. Otherwise, it's 0. So otherwise, in this case, means if x is irrational, then the value of f of x is 0. Okay? So this is a function, because for every real number, we have a corresponding uh, element of the codomain, either 1 or 0. Now here's another technical term called image definition. Image. Okay, suppose f is a function from set A to set B. Then the image of f, so image of f is written as I am of F, which is a set that is F of A, where A is A. 
Okay. So this is this image is the set of all elements of B that has a corresponding element in A via the function f. Okay, so maybe I should draw a picture here. We have A and B, they are sets, and for every element of A, we have a corresponding element in B, right? But it does not mean that all elements of B have some corresponding elements in A, right? Because some part, some elements of B is not mapped from A, okay? So let's write this as this. So entirety of A is mapped to a subset of B, okay? So this subset is called the image. Image of F. And that is I am of F. Okay? You know, there can be some elements in B to which no element from A uh, uh, come. Okay? So clearly, image of F is a subset of the codomain of F. For a map from A to B, we say that image of F is a subset of codomain of F, which is B. But in the case where this is equal, instead of just a proper subset, then we say F if image of F is equal to its codomain, then F is onto or surjective or a surjection if you prefer uh, the noun surjection or epic. We have many terms for this but uh, and actually they do have some nuances but at this point you don't have to worry too much about the difference but we just use these terms interchangeably okay so this means if we have a map a b and so if we have a map function from a to b then the image of f covers entire b so this case is this okay so if this is the case then this function f is called onto or subjective or epic more logically uh, this situation is expressed as this for every element in b which is actually a codomain of f there exists some x in A such that y is equal to f of x. Okay, so since the image of f covers entire B, whichever element you take, you pick from B, there is a corresponding element in A such that this holds. Okay, so if we pick any y from B, there is always some x in A such that f of x is equal to y. So this situation is expressed as this uh, notion, by this, these notions, onto subjective epic. Okay, let's see one example. Uh, we define a function from integers to natural numbers that maps each integer x into 1 plus x squared, which is a natural number. Is this subjective? Actually, the answer is no, it's not subjective. Uh, in the 
in the initial version of my lecture notes, I said this is surjective, but that is wrong. So to see this, let's pick 3, which is a natural number. So if this function is surjective, then there should be x such that 1 plus x squared is equal to 3, right? So if this is the case, then x, is, x squared is 2, so x is plus minus square root of 2, which is not a natural number. So in this case, we have a set of integers, set of natural numbers, and 3 is outside of the image of f. And there are many such numbers like this. So this function is not surjective. When we define a function from set A to set B, uh, we should ha define the rule to correspond every element in A to some element in B. Right? But it is entirely possible that two different elements in A correspond to the same element in B. Okay? In some cases, we want to uh, distinguish this case with the case where every different element in A correspond to always correspond to different elements in B. Okay, this case is called uh, this such a function is called to be uh, one to one or sometimes one one or injective or in a noun form is injection or uh, monic or mono noun form we use these terms interchangeably there are, you know, we usually use injection or injective okay so here's a more formal definition. If okay, F is injective, if and only if for all two elements in A, A if a is not equal to a prime, then f of a is not equal to f of a prime. Okay, if this holds, then we say the function, uh, actually f from a to b, is injective, or one to one, or monic, and so on. Okay. Now, note this notion. Uh, sorry. Note this notion. If a and a prime are not equal, then f of a is not equal to f of a prime. Okay. If you take the contrapositive of this statement, this means the contrapositive. Okay, contrapositive. meaning the negation of the right-hand side implies the negation of the left-hand side. Okay. Contrapositive of this statement is this. If f of a is equal to f of a prime, this implies a is equal to a prime. Okay. So, in terms of this uh, diagram if a and a prime are different points then they necessarily uh, maps to map to different points in B or 
in case uh, if if they are actually equal then that implies a and a prime are actually equal so that's the definition of injection Okay, note that the notions of surjection and injection injection they're different. You know, surjection means the map cover covers entire codomain, and injection means uh, two different elements maps to two different elements in B, in codomain. So it is possible that a function is injection but not surjection. Or it can be surjection or but not injection. Okay. So the image may be just a subset of uh, B in for uh, for uh, for an injection. But yet some function may be both surjection and injection at the same time. If that's the case, it is called bijection. Bijective or bijection. Or maybe ISO. ISO. Meaning uh, this function maps one set to another set and those sets are in a sense more or less uh, equivalent uh, of the same form because every element so bijection means every element of A maps to a different element in B than other elements and every element of B has a corresponding element in A. So it is 1 to 1 and on to, so in other words, it's injective at the same time as surjective. So if this is the case, uh, the set A and B are more or less the same thing. It may look, it may look different, but uh, essentially at least in terms of uh, the number of elements, they must be equal. So that's bijection. Next, we define a way to combine two functions. So suppose we have two functions, f from a to b, and g from b to c. So we have three sets, A, B, C. So if we map one element from A to B, then this element in B may be mapped into some, un some element in C. So in this way, we can define a mapping, a map from A to C. So here's the definition. So we define the composition we can compose composition of functions g after f which this is a function from a to c okay and that is defined by this x uh, g of f of x where x is an element of A and g of f of x is an element of C. So this defines the function composition. More diagrammatically, we may express this uh, composition as this. A, B, so that is a mapping from A to B and B to C that maps, uh, it, uh, this map is G, and uh, from A to C. First we apply F, then apply G. So that is G circle F. We, we usually call it G after F. Okay, So F 
then g that is g after f the, uh, is the function composition and of course in order for this definition to be meaningful that uh, we require that the co-domain of f which is b is equal to the domain of g which is also b of course otherwise this composition doesn't make sense okay so uh, we require that the co-domain of f is equal to domain of g uh, by the way this g after f is sometimes expressed as f then g in, in particular in computer science maybe they prefer to use this notation rather than this but they mean the same thing Let, let's see an example of function composition suppose we have z to integers to integer defined by f of x equal to x minus 1 and g uh, integer integers to a natural number plus 0 okay and g of x is defined as x squared okay then g after f is a function from integers to natural number and 0 defined by this so that is g of f of x so that is g of first apply f and then apply g so that is x minus 1 squared so therefore uh, g after f of x is x minus 1 squared. This is the composition of f and g.